Yo, what up, YouTube? Uh, so in today's video, what I want to do is talk about the clutches that I have and the uh, downs that I was experiencing fairly quick, just right after I uh, put these clutches into the incubator. Stay tuned. All right, so let's get right into it. Drama, here we go. So as you guys know, couple of days, I mean, not a couple of days ago, maybe three weeks ago now, I, I walked into the uh, my stink room, found two clutches, hurried up, put them in the incubator. I thought I had it all spot on. My temperatures were fluctuating somewhat outside, of, on the outside, so my incubator as a whole, not my actual egg, my egg boxes, um, and my humidity was also ranging. So my and temperature inside of the uh, incubator, that's a big unit, was between 88 and 91 degrees. My my humidity, uh, seen, I'm trying to remember, but I'm looking at my gauges, uh, it was between 84 and 96 percent humidity. Uh, but inside of my egg boxes, was, it was a lot tighter. It was between 89 and 91 degrees um, and usually it stayed at 90 um, you know all the time at 90 um, the humidity did range in there it was ranging between like 96 99 all well I guess between 99 and like 92 um, and I honestly didn't think that was a problem I still don't think that's that was a problem that I was having so but Quickly about in today, maybe 10, I started seeing that one neck starting to dimple a little bit and I knew that wasn't normal. So I reached out to a couple people. Actually, I used to reach out to Jason at Genomic Labs. Um, he kind of told me a little bit, you know, we kind of talked about it. Um, I thought maybe, all right, I tweaked some stuff around, you know. Uh, that's actually, okay, so that's actually when I put plexiglass and, why am I tripping? No, 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 never mind. I had put the plexiglass on and all that right bef uh, before then. So, uh, uh, what I, what was I doing? Um, oh, I'm guys, I'm having a brain fart. So, um, I forgot. What, oh, okay, here we go. So, I, uh, I put a, a ceram wrap on it, right? Like that plastic covering over that everybody be using to, uh, like cover the thing. I was like, okay, that plastic cap wrap will, is going to, uh, up my humidity and keep my temperature even more constant which it did so a week passed and um, the humidity 99% throughout like there was no fluctuation anymore so honestly guys you know I have no experience but that wrap uh, you know that ceramic wrap thing it really works uh, I wasn't a fan um, but I think what it is too is that and I think I have one of the caps. Um, hold on. Here we go. Okay, so so these caps here, you know, no editing. You know how Clutch X, Clutch X does it. No editing, man. We, we we're not that fancy. We don't care about that kind of stuff. You know, straight to the point. Uh, these they're like uh, you know tubs and like uh, lids they're super flimsy so what I'm thinking I think Billy over at a mutation creation had a video that had was kind of talking about the same thing uh, you can't really get a tight seal on, on your actual container and I think you get humidity uh, escaping but I think more importantly as well you get a lot of airflow and I had a couple fans. I have. If, I'll show you guys the incubator in a little bit. I have a fan up on top and a fan down below, and I'm circulating air, right? Um, you know, um, in a clockwise motion. And you know, I think that the fans might have been a little too strong. And this also comes from Genomic Labs. You know, Jason Moore at Genomic Labs. Um, and I think he was right. So I mean, anybody out there that doesn't know who it is. He's not really active on YouTube. He does have a channel, so just look at Genomic Labs. Try to find him there. Uh, but for sure on Instagram, uh, geno again, Genomic Labs. I mean, Jude knows what he's talking about. He's really smart, you know, a little, little snake doctor. Um, um, so make sure you guys reach out to him if you guys have questions about y'all stuff. But uh, so what happened was that he said that maybe the fans were too strong and maybe that there was too much air coming in into the, into the uh, egg boxes themselves and it was uh, kind of like dehydrating the eggs. So, 
even though I had put the wrap and it had set 99% humidity at all times, I think the airflow was still a little bit too strong. And that's something that I never thought about. I thought it was just humidity, temperature. And there definitely is that third element, as far as in my case, in my experience, and that's the kind of airflow or fans that you have in there. So I've, you know, some told me, because uh, also uh, Rob, Rob Baratol, he also uh, helped me out. And it seems that he doesn't have um, air fans or, or fans in his incubator. I know that some people do build them in. So it was, it was interesting hearing both sides of the, of the story or the argument or, or the methods. And you know, in my case, I was panicking, so all I did was you know turn off the fans, uh, and it seems to be working. My eggs haven't de uh, regressed anymore. I'm fairly confident that they're all gonna make it full term, which I'm super excited about. I'm super happy about it. Uh, so what I want to do right now is actually want to turn the camera over to the incubator. I want to show you the modifications that I actually did the first time around, thinking that it was gonna be enough to you know keep my eggs uh, or my clutches healthy. And then what I had to do after that to actually, you know, make sure that they stay uh, healthy because there's something I learned really, really quick. There's, there's two differences. There's a difference between you thinking you're ready, you know, and also, but also like knowing you're ready once you actually have like live eggs in your incubator that actually are like, you know, in a sense, living things that are in your incubator and temperatures and things are just, anything happen right so it was a really it's you know it's just anybody out there just know if you have your incubator set you might need to tweak it uh, once you actually have live eggs in there uh, so just know that and so it's very I would say it's very important to look monitor your eggs at all times but definitely the first two weeks because if you start seeing dimpling or anything like that too early on it might be really hard to make it long term you know I was thinking like you know, in my head, I have played different scenarios. If they start dehydrating, maybe like day 45 or something, 40, and then you fix it, you know, you fix the problem, probably likelihood is that they will make it full term. But, you know, two weeks into it, I think I was really worried that it was, you know, way too soon. So make sure you guys keep your your um, clutches, you know, keep looking at your clutches at all times. So let me show you guys what I did and then, um, you know, take it from there. All right, guys. So I, this is the part of the room that's very rarely seen, just because it's really messy and, and doesn't look as professional as I wish it did. So this is the incubator that I bought uh, maybe like a year ago too. I kind of, you know, went all in and just made sure that I had it before I needed it. Uh, so this is the incubator that I purchased. It was 500 bucks. I think I have a video about it, uh, you know, from a while from a while back. If you guys want to go look at that. Uh, so again. These refrigerators are very well insulated, but the actual glass itself is one of the worst insulators out there. So, uh, you know, when I was monitoring my monitoring my temperature, uh, you know, before I had any clutches, I realized that I was it was really hard for me to stay consistent with my temperature humidity. So what I did is I put a, a film of plexiglass. Uh, it's about a quarter inch thick of plexiglass, and that made a huge difference right away. So when that happened, that's when I was uh, thinking, okay, I've resolved the issue, we are good. This is gonna work. Um, my temperatures were spot on and my humidity was spot on, but unfortunately it seems that this was not enough. And then, I, oh, you know, let's open this up. So on top of that, what I did is I actually put this weather seal up on top here because, you know, uh, because it is a door, the weakest point or the easiest point for humidity and temperature to escape out of the fridge was around the openings around the door. Now the door itself has that, uh, but that you know weather seals too. But I figured more, more won't more won't be a bad thing. So I put these in. I put the plexiglass in, and I thought that was awesome. I thought it was perfect. Uh, but then this fan here, you see the how close my eggs are with this fan. The other fan is all the way down in the bottom, which is probably out of the shot. Um, but I think this fan was what's causing the issue, not necessarily the bottom fan. But you know, in my panic, in a way, um, I was like, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm just gonna shut off both uh, both heaters or, or fans, especially after I talked to Rob Barraclaw. Uh, you know, he was he said he didn't have them, and you know, he's a very smart guy too. So I see all of his videos. So make sure you you check out his videos um, if you guys don't follow him. Again, his name's Rob Barraclaw, uh, and you know. 
he said that he didn't use any uh, fans. So I was like, oh snap, all right, cool. Well, if he doesn't use them, I'm not gonna use them. Uh, so I turned them off and sure enough, I, just, I don't know if you guys see there, um, my two clutches here are thriving. Um, some of the eggs, so I had I have five eggs here, four eggs here. On this four egg clutch, I had two eggs dimpling. Uh, on, on this one here, I had another two, so it was four eggs total. And I thought it was done for. And then actually when I turned off the fans, um, you know, from, from hearing Rob not using them and from Jason telling me uh, that that might be the issue. Uh, once I turned them off, sure enough, the eggs, like three of them actually started pumping back up and the other ones just stopped dehydrating. And, and that's when I knew, okay, you know, it seems that they're gonna make it. And sure enough, a day, two, three, four days pass by and they're still hanging in there and it seems like they're gonna go full term. So, um, again, modifications that I did, fans are off, plexiglass here, weather strip hill here, and a bunch of water trays just to try to keep the humidity up. Now, I don't think I need this many, but you know, seeing as I have the space and I have a big incubator, I figured that I'll put as much water in there to help the humidity out. So this is what my incubator looks like now. It's very quiet, no more fans. All right guys, so I know this is a pretty long video and maybe it's a little bit boring, but you know, it's, it's such an important thing and I hope that somebody that's willing to listen to a rookie with no experience uh, whatsoever, uh, if he sees this video and they actually have the same problems that I'm having, maybe they would uh, listen to Rob and Jason through me because I got this from them um, and they're very very smart guys and I think that their advice uh, was pretty uh, important for me to be able to actually make sure that these clutches made it all the way through um, and I guess I'll end the video by saying thanks, thanks to them and also thanks to uh, Shane um, from Small Town Exotics who actually was like hey I have a brilliant idea talk to Rob so uh, you know all these dudes and then I, I forget his name so I'm sorry that I don't call you out by name but um, I'll put his description down below because uh, I know he does make incubators and he was talking about how he made incubators with fans being inside of the unit so that they're not necessarily flowing through your eggs the air going through your eggs or something like that and that was pretty I think that's a pretty brilliant idea actually um, and then you know on top of that I just want to say maybe if anybody makes it to the end of the video um, just just make sure that you guys are reaching that. I think most of us do this, but uh, make sure that if you're starting out, just reach out to as many people as possible. I mean, people are usually very happy to help. And I think those that have bigger platforms, maybe like, um, you know, I won't want any names, but everybody knows the people that are huge in the industry or the hobby. Uh, I think sometimes they, I mean, I think they want to help, but a lot of times I feel like, you know, they, they have millions of comments probably right so um you know like it might be hard for you to actually get through and but you know us smaller breeders seem to be obviously have more time because we don't have the amount of comments and all that stuff to go through so you know everybody's out here trying to help you know uh, whether we're big or small uh lack of experience or a lot of experience so if anybody out there has any questions or comments or concerns about the clutches or what they're doing or anything uh, just reach out to people, man. I mean, people are here to help, and uh, you know, I've never met anybody that was just a complete asshole and that they just, you know, were like, fuck you, buddy, that's your problem, right? I've never experienced that, not even in a very passive way. So, you know, everybody in the industry, your hobby seems to be very helpful and, you know, committed to like helping others uh, and creating a welcoming environment. Um, so, I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to talk to people that I did uh, because if it wasn't for them probably these clutches would have not made it full term so I just want to say thank you to everybody and I'll end the video here because I know it's running pretty long so thank you all for watching until next time